Hey, good morning everyone, it's Tractor Man 44. Uh, hey, this morning, we're gonna take one of the old tractors and hook it onto the tag trailer. We're gonna head up to a neighbor's house here and we're gonna pick up a little fodder for the fireplace. He's got a couple of trees that are real close to his shed uh, and some other areas that he just needs to have taken out of the way. We'll be taking the, the 440, we'll be taking uh, the homeowner 290, and then we'll take the 026, the proud and venerable old standard 026. I guess here I got to come clean and tell y'all that uh, this obviously is not a project we did just last week. Uh, you can tell there's no greenery and everything, you know, going too much. Uh, this was actually done in April. But try as I may, I cannot stay on top of getting these videos put up. I have a continual backlog of them. So sometimes we just go and, and pick one and, and edit the doggone thing and just go ahead and put it up. So that's what's happening here. And, uh, like I say, it is definitely not up to date, but it is work that we got done. This angle here might give you a little indication of the, uh, the the little bit of a hillside that we were operating on, and then also whenever you're pulling logs out, you know you got to do the little the little uh, dance, you know, the little jungle dance, trying to maneuver uh, as long a log as you can out between the the trees that you don't want to cut down. And then of course there comes the uh, the age-old question about using parks for loading pole wood. Uh, 
you can use them to your advantage like right here we're, we're having him pick them up and then we can just transfer them easily to the trailer uh, but if you try to dump them onto the trailer they will go in uh, multiple directions and it sometimes entangle so much it's really a pain in the rear to, to, you know, to straighten up the load. Now we do that a lot and I think we even do in this particular video but uh, we try to minimize our efforts as much as we can and use the mechanical advantage to our advantage. Okay now guys I gotta admit the load uh, looking a little bit wanky here. Now if this was going to be a load we had to transport on the roadway behind our truck or something like that we would never stack uh, anything resembling this this type of a load at all but we're literally going you know three tenths of a mile back down my own private gravel driveway to my own particular uh, wood pile so I'm not concerned at all about the way we're doing it but uh, have no fear this would not go out on the road behind a truck or a or a tractor even. We will get you, we'll take this tractor to park. What we'll do, we'll cut that other tree down and let you stay here in the tree. You're fine. You want to cut that other one, Mike? So Mike, uh, so I had to be trimming while we're going. Now, you know what? I'm pretty sure there's a number of people out there that really have no appreciation or very little appreciation for these old, old tractors and stuff that, uh, that we use primarily around the place here. Uh, we have our modern tractors and everything, we use those to, to a great extent, but uh, as every chance that we get, we like to fire up these old ones here. As a matter of fact, this particular one here turns, uh, turns the same age as you this year. We're both 70 years old and we're... Uh, Working not quite as hard as what we used to, you know, we were kind of hoping for retirement. But uh, we still get out there and try to get it done as good as we can. There's a lot of life left in uh, both a 70-year-old man and also a 70-year-old crack. You can believe me on that one. One of the cool things about coming up and helping out my neighbors, he's got his own skid load, so I don't have to run mine up here unless we got something really, really big. This little 753 is quite a bit smaller, uh, horsepower-wise and physical weight-wise, uh, as compared to my LX865 Ford and uh, But this does a very good job, and I had does a fair job uh, putting getting this stuff on the trailer. You know, so uh, it, it really is nice and, and very beneficial. I have access to these things whenever you do get out into the job site and start picking up materials. Now, I just got through saying that this, this little fella here is a little bit less physical weight than my LX865, and you can see right here, he starts coming up on the front end, so we had to drop the load. Uh, this is not quite on the level, it's just subtly downhill but uh, that's just enough weight and enough shift to get him to come up onto the front end. Now what he could have done, he could have kept that, the parts curled and very, barely lifted it. He could have put the tips of his parts right on the edge of the trailer then went ahead and dumped. And that would have set the rear wheels back down on the ground and he could have went ahead and upended the load right onto the trailer. But it doesn't matter because it's, no matter which way you do it, it's gonna end up in a little bit of a jumble like you're seeing right here that you've got to take care of. out here that come up like myself and my much older brother learning how to load logs with uh, with a second tractor and uh, a series of cables and chains and rolling them up ramps uh, over the side of the trailer like our father did back in the uh, oh, in the 20s or so 20s and 30s loading with a team of horses or team of mules um, if you come up like that learning how to do it that way you, you have an appreciation a great appreciation for how simple and easy it is with today's machinery. 
Now, loading up ramps and everything, you know, you got to have some really good communication uh, between the guy that's on the ground in being responsible for the log being loaded correctly and the guy on the tractor that's actually pulling it up the, uh, up the set of cables. It's not as simple as what it sounds. You have to understand pivot points and how to use a cane hook or a cant hook to cut or change the direction of the log to get it to roll a little farther to the front or to the rear of the trailer depending on how quickly it wants to roll on one end or the other. So there's a lot of things you've got to take into consideration. This is so much simpler, just unbelievably simple, the way that we're doing it these days. Now, for you guys out there that have a sharp ear for the mechanics, you can hear a throwout bearing knocking right there. Uh, this engine is in excellent condition. It's nothing to do with the motor at all. It is the uh, the throwout bearing. But uh, in order to change that throwout bearing, it, it takes a little bit of labor. It's uh, quite labor intensive on these guys here. So it's going to go until she blows, you know what I mean? But we'll get to her one of these days. Okay, you busted me. I got my iPhone out. I'm taking a, a short 15, 20 second video, maybe 30 second video to uh, put on Facebook, you know, but I don't even know if I ever got around to putting that up. Everybody knows whenever you're hauling logs or heavy loads on a loader, you want to keep your load as low to the ground as possible. That's exactly what he's doing, simply because we have such a restricted amount of space back here that he's got to lift it this high to clear the tire, the tire and fender of that old tractor yet miss the tree on the right hand side. So he is, he's running it as low as he possibly can. And with this being a little bit a heavier one, uh, he's going a little bit slow in case he wants to tip just a little bit or that this way or that simply because well, there's some uneven ground back in the back but uh yeah it's um he's not running around there you know with it up high for any other reason other than that i don't want to tear the pin off that old tractor we got pretty two pretty good little jags on the trailer there's a couple of nice saw logs, but most everything will be heating wood. The good thing about it, we did not have to get out on the highway or the blacktop. It's right here on my own personal gravel driveway, right up at my neighbor's house. It's going to be bad at adding a park port on to his work site. of these little Kubotas, these subcompact or compact factories is just absolutely amazing. We use these tractors for virtually everything you can imagine back here. Use them for things is way too much for what they're made for, but we don't care. We gotta get the good out of them. He's that log is too long to get in between those trees. He's jacking back and forth to get between the trees. So here we are at the close of another wood cutting day. As you can see, we got a pretty good little jag of 
full wood. And we got uh, several good saw logs, as a matter of fact. To make a long story short, it was just a fun day. It's a nice 80 degree day. Winds are blowing, you know, we had some nice cool water to drink. None of the chainsaws broke down and nobody's leaking any blood at the end of a good work day. So uh, everybody's happy. It's a win-win. He got what he wanted. Just some trees removed. We got what we wanted, which is some free wood. Had some neat exercise after sitting around all winter and fattening up, you know what I mean? So you know what? This track man 44 and I am out of here, guys.